What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and this week I want to talk about the Harry Potter Open World RPG. Now, I know I've gotten a lot of requests to talk about this game to make more videos, and I absolutely will. I'll be making videos on this uh, every couple weeks as we get closer and closer, hopefully, to the announcement of the game. And when that happens, obviously, we'll talk about it as well. It's going to be a really, really big part of the channel. So if you guys have liked these Harry Potter videos, make sure you guys are always showing me by leaving a like, by making sure you guys are subscribed and have that bell icon turned on. You guys truly, truly rock, and I, I really do thank you guys uh, for watching these videos and I love making them I really really do we've talked a lot we've talked a lot about a lot of features about this game which is very hard by the way uh, to do because the game we don't know any you know we have leaks but there's not that many leaks of it and they're very old uh, and we also haven't seen anything about it yet so it's, it's a bit hard and I I'm, think I'm probably best at speculating about just anything um, but it's pretty hard to speculate when you have next to nothing to go off of but for this video, I did think of something. I do want to address it is talking about could this be the start of a franchise? And I think the easy, easy answer is yes. I truly do. I, and you know what? Another thing to, to think about is I think they're setting it up in the game from even what we know right now. Uh, from And again, do we actually know it? Because they're from leaks. You have to take it with a grain of salt. But I do think from what we know, I think we can even see it from that. And, and so let's talk about the whole business aspect or even aside from the leaks. And we'll, we'll get to those leaks uh, after. Afterwards, I think it makes a ton of sense. Harry Potter games have always been around, right? We've had Lego games. We've had movie tie-in games. We've had other attempts at uh, Harry Potter games. we had Quidditch games. Some games have worked really, really well. Some games still hold up now. Some games are atrocious, okay? I mean, there's just no other way around it. They're very, very hit or miss. And I think what I've always said in all these videos, I think, honestly, a lot of people, I've seen it, I see it, honestly, every single time. A lot of people agree in that the potential I think actually outweighs uh, people that actually like it. I think there are a lot of people that like Harry Potter, but I think the, at least the audience that I have here, even if you don't love Harry Potter, you can still at least see the potential of a game like this, an open world RPG, like choose your own adventure, right? Where you do spells, you go to classes, you can be good or bad in the Harry Potter universe, all right? Or like the wizarding world. The potential there is outrageous. It's it's higher, by the way, I think, than DC. It's higher than Marvel, uh, the other games going on, I'm, I'm saying. I truly do. I believe the potential is enormous just because, I, I, I guess specifically for me, just because I love magic. I love that kind of approach. I don't love it more than the superhero stuff, but I think the potential in a game, which I'm getting closer and closer to hinting at uh, games that I'm most looking forward to, and I will do that, by the way. I'll still have that ranking video one day where I talk about which of the three games, Harry Potter, Rocksteady, and Warner Bros. Montreal, which game I'm most looking forward to. We will do that, and we'll do that eventually if you guys uh, still want to see it. I know a lot of people have said it, but I think it makes a lot of sense that this really is the kickoff point for what their franchise can be. Again, they've, they've had hit-or-miss games, but they've all been destroyed Again, they've been sometimes movie tie-in games, which eventually end, right? If, the, if there's no movies, then there's no movie tie-in games. This could be the game that kicks it off that says, okay, we're going to do this game, and it's going to be outrageously good. And I think you have to think about, about a, like a game development perspective is you don't put this many resources and this much into a game to then drop it directly after, especially, I feel like, an open-world game like this, again, like an RPG kind of game. You put a lot into these kind of games, and to, then to just drop it and pretend it never happened, and move on and never come back to it you know yes you may get out of it all that you wanted to when it releases but you really I think are also you wasted part of your time because you put so much time into that you built the basis of a really good game and to be honest with you look at what we've already gotten from games like this two examples I have they're both Sony but and they're both different obviously you can't completely compare them but they are good examples is Horizon Horizon Zero Dawn and Spider-Man what do those two what do all three of those games really have in common open world they were created to kind of kick off their franchises right so Horizon Big world, very, very different than what we've seen, especially from Guerrilla Games, but just different in general. The game was outrageously successful, and you know what? It's very easy to make another game. And in fact, it would be very, very not smart of them to do something different, right? We all assume, and at this point, we've gotten so many, you know, in, in informal uh, confirmations that it's happening, uh, that they're making a second game. Because it just makes so much sense. You, you spent all that time into making that world, into making Alloy, into making that universe, the story, the lore, that 
why would you just drop it? And it's also relatively easy. In a game, I mean, I understand making any game is difficult, but it's relatively easy comparatively to have a second game in it because a lot of the stuff is already done because you already did it. Now maybe you have to, you know, refine some things or rework like your engine or some mechanics or whatever it happens to be. But it's easy. Spider Man, same thing. Look how fast we and and by the way, Horizon Spider Man. We could be getting these games three to four years after their original game. That is not all that long for an open world game of their size and of their quality. So you think about that with Harry Potter. I mean, just look at it from other games. Mass Effect, uh, Dragon Age, Witcher, all these kind of games. They're not dead. They're uh, Some of them are on hi like hiatuses for sure because of, uh, of sh uh, shaky decision making, right? But they're not all dead. In fact, none of them are, and they all will be brought back at some point. And they're all in their own situation, by the way, their own unique situation. But you have Harry Potter, and it's like, okay, you can totally see this, and especially, again, with Warner Bros. owning it, obviously owning Harry Potter. The Fantastic Beast movies are still going on. You have to imagine eventually. Eventually, they're going to bring back Harry Potter in general. There's always been a lot of talks, like with Daniel Radcliffe talking about, like, yeah, now is not the time, but, like, hey, maybe one day it's possible. So, like, you have to imagine Harry Potter will, have, like, literally, the character Harry Potter will eventually make his return. Like, that is, I think, just a matter of time before that happens. So, you have all that kind of stuff. It makes a lot of sense to develop that world. You also look at some other, let's look at other things. Warner Bros. in general, their gaming division, look at what we've heard they're trying to do. They're trying to make a DC universe. They want Warner Bros. Montreal's game to kick off a DC universe that Rocksteady would be a part of, that Warner Bros. Montreal's second game would be a part of, that any game probably that has DC in it that's in that kind of style or any other studio that they want. Hey, do you want to make a Superman game? Well, you got to be part of the universe, but go ahead and make it. Obviously, you have to you know fulfill all these other qualifications, but they're literally their plan is to make a DC universe in video games. They have one in the movies. It didn't work out so well, but now they have one in games, and that's their plan. Well, it seems seems like, again, they have like a big picture kind of thinking that they're doing. So why wouldn't you do that with Harry Potter? Why wouldn't you develop a game that you expect to you know, be a, an actual thing that can span uh, multiple years, multiple console generations, um, you know, just multiple things in general, even Harry Potter related? Why wouldn't you do that? Makes a ton of sense. The final thing, besides all of that stuff, the final thing, I think the biggest thing is when it's set. So I've wanted to make tons of videos. We talked about it before about like Voldemort and and like is there characters that we would know that be in the game the tough thing about that is and I don't think I necessarily knew this when I made some of those videos uh, because again the leaks have been so long ago but the leaks are that the game is set long before Harry Potter okay there is no Harry Potter Voldemort isn't even around in fact Grindelwald isn't even around so the the main villains that we know of the two biggest you know wizarding villains that we've ever heard of in the in the wizarding world that JK Rowling did that all these movies and books have done. They aren't even around yet. Harry Potter is not even around yet. Uh, Dumbledore may not even be around yet, or he'd be extreme. In fact, I don't think so. I, I think actually he wouldn't be around yet either. Hogwarts is around, yes, but almost no characters that we know. Maybe some of like the ghosts would be there, but none of the characters that we know of would be in this game. That is a weird starting point. I would say that. I would I would say if you don't do any like critical thinking, and I just told you all that stuff, I'd say, hey, they're making a Harry Potter open world RPG. And you're like, oh my God, I get to play as Harry Potter. Or maybe I get to play as one of his friends and I get to choose my own thing, but I could be a friend. And I'd be like, oh wait, but he's not in it. In fact, he's not born yet. And it's like, oh, well, well, Voldemort's older. So is it like Tom Riddle? Tom? No, no, it's not him either. Well, Grindelwald, he's a big, you know, he's a big villain. He's like second to, and, I'm, and you could say, well, he's not in it either. He's not around yet. Oh, Dumbled. No, you just keep going down the line. It's like, oh, so... I just do spells. And it's like, okay, when the game comes out, I mean, ultimately, what's funny about what I just said, it's like, that's that's actually the game. Hopefully, that doesn't disappoint people. Truly, I don't think it should. I really don't think it should because I think, again, the the allure with Harry Potter, the idea, or the wizarding, I keep saying Harry Potter, but I mean, that's what it is. The, the allure with the wizarding world is the spells, is the magic, is that kind of idea of, of good and evil and stuff like that. So that's what's going to be exciting no matter what. That's what I'm going to be excited about in this game, if there's zero characters that we've ever heard of, it doesn't matter ultimately because actually you're picking your own student anyway. You're you're developing relationships. They can tell an original story in a pre-existing universe. I have no problem with that. But think about that though. Why start there? Why have that be your starting point? Well, again, very different. Not something that a lot of people would predict. So kind of an unknown. That's uh, the ability to tell your own tale to not rely on what's already been told. I like that. Nothing about that is bad, by the way. In fact, that actually 
could be the biggest thing in that they don't have to follow the Harry Potter timeline because if it's so far before it, well, then they can just do whatever they want. Maybe they can, and, and literally what I was just about to say, maybe they can set it up. That could be what happens. What if they end it, and then now the next game, maybe it goes into Grindelwald territory where we start to see some of that stuff and we can be part of it. Then maybe we can get into the Harry Potter stuff. Maybe they're given permission to rewrite some stuff. It'd be interesting. I, I actually, that, that would be a debate, right? It's like, would you want them to kind of rewrite it? Or do we want to be playing the Harry Potter movies, like one through seven or seven part one and part two? Would we like to be playing that, but not as Harry Potter as like a, a Hogwarts student? Again, but like a choosing your own, own adventure and RPG and stuff like that. But we have to go through that story. You know, it's already been told. Or Would we want that? It, is, is that a movie tie-in game just with like more liberties given to the studio? Or would we want a completely new story? Would we want maybe a game that skips over Harry Potter in general and goes to after him? Because a lot of after him isn't talked about. Nobody really knows, right? And that's again, like free, that's, that's like the Wild West. They can do whatever they want. Obviously, those are future things, and I, and I, maybe people would be upset. It's like, well, we don't even have the first game yet, and you're talking about a game like three or four in the franchise. But ultimately, I think it's a really good idea that this kickstarts it, that this is the beginning of the franchise. Again, you can do so much. You could stay in this area. Again, you could introduce Grindelwald without really muddying the waters too badly. You could maybe get into the Voldemort, you know, the Tom Riddle territory without messing stuff up. But then again, eventually you'd have to get into, well, you either rewrite it or you have to tell the story that's already been told and then again maybe you can skip that part and just go after it so again the potential is enormous we already know warner rose wants to make these kind of franchises and keep these like worlds alive you know for more than just the base game right we, we know they want to create universes uh harry potter again the movies are not gone the, the the fantastic beast movies are still out they're not doing so great but they still come out harry potter is always a franchise i think that's always going to be around right it's never going to go away so there's a lot of power there there's a lot of power and honestly that excites me it excites me me to know that I feel like this game can't and won't be a one-off game. It absolutely won't. Unless it absolutely bombs, but I truly don't think how... I think the name power alone, even the game sucks, I think the name power alone, people would buy it. And then, at worst, the studio, Avalanche, would just have to go back and say, okay, well, we really have to nail this second game. But I really think that that is uh, what's going to happen. But guys, let me know in the comments below, uh, what do you think? Do you think this game could be the kickstart uh, for a, a Harry Potter franchise? or Harry Potter universe uh, in video games, obviously, if done right. Let me know. Make sure you guys subscribe to our YouTube channel podcast now. Hit the bell icon so you guys know when all these videos go up. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I really do love making these Harry Potter videos uh, for you guys. I'm really glad that you guys have liked watching them. We're going to be making more of them. And then, like I said in the beginning of the video, uh, when something is eventually announced or as we get closer, I'll absolutely be covering it as well, okay? Thank you all again for watching. I hope to see you all on the next video.